Greetings, Father Joe here, your friendly neighborhood pastor, coming to you from very frigid St. Patrick's Church in Highland Mills, New York. Uh, today is Tuesday of the fourth week in Ordinary Time, and we have this very moving, moving story in our first reading uh, about David and his son Absalom. And uh, in our gospel, we have the story of the healing of the daughter of Jairus. But I, th I think uh, something you might not notice, in, in St. Mark's gospel, oftentimes Mark will put a story within the story, and, and that's to give us hope. Um, I, I don't know if this is simply a literary device that St. Mark uses, or as I, I, I think in many cases would be accurate, is God gives us uh, a kind of a story within a story for the same reason. God doesn't want us to lose hope or to, to give up on faith. And so in our gospel, uh, the synagogue official, Jairus, comes to Jesus and he says, My daughter is at the point of death. Please come and heal her. And so Jesus goes with him. Now, if you've read the story before, you know that the daughter dies. Um, but before we know that, St. Mark, and again, I, I would think that we would say God, he gives us a smaller miracle so that we can put our faith in Jesus and have hope for the bigger miracle. And so uh, we have the story of the woman who has this flow of blood and she's been like most of her life and nobody can help her, uh, but she has faith that if she can just touch Jesus's cloak, that she will be healed. And she is healed, and so Jairus is seeing this and the next thing that happens is they come and they bring him word that his daughter has died. And Jesus' response is, no, she's not dead. She's only sleeping. Now, this could be that Jairus' daughter has actually died. And by the way, I think this is the case. Um, but his daughter has actually died and Jesus says she's only sleeping meaning that he's going to be able to raise her the way he did Lazarus. Um, but the point here being that this smaller miracle, that of the woman with the flow of blood, is going to give Jairus the hope. Also, by the way, this, this flow of blood, that didn't just uh, you know, have consequences on the woman's physical health. But it made her unclean, and, and therefore she had to be separated from the community and could not uh, go into worship in the temple. And, and so this would have been just a drastic, uh, a horrible situation in her life. And, and so Jesus heals that. Now, if, if we use that same idea and we go back and, and we look at King David and Absalom. Uh, David is a king and he's got his faults. But Absalom, his son, decides to take the throne from his father. And he, he's got an army and he's hunting his father down to kill him. And he, he takes his father's wives and concubines and, and has sex with them in public, thus showing that he is the new king, that he's taking whatever was his father's. But David doesn't stop loving him. In fact, as they bring word uh, of Absalom's death, I mean, killing, he's been killed, uh, and, and the people who bring the message, they think, wow, we have this victory David the king will be safe, and so he will be happy. But David's response is, Absalom, Absalom, my son, uh, you know, would that I have died instead of you. His, just, his heart is breaking. 
he wanted to be reconciled with his son. And the people who killed him, uh, two things here. One, Absalom was the person who was going to be king. And 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 so to kill him is regicide. I mean, it, it's killing the, the future king. David wouldn't do that to Saul, even though he had already been anointed by uh, Samuel, he still respected the person. The soldiers who kill Absalom, they seem to think that they have the right to kill Absalom. And, and David's response, which I think is a good image of God's response, is, oh, this is the biggest tragedy. I would have given my life in place of his. Um, if, if you look at this pattern that I spoke of in St. Mark, where God gives us little examples to give us hope, if David can have that same love for Absalom, who was trying to kill him and who was trying to take his kingdom away, if his heart could be moved, how much more God's heart is in love with us and and God will always, always try to reach out and to save us. And that our response should always be to, to put our faith in God's love and his mercy. Sometimes, I, I know if you brought up in my time, uh, you know, a, a lot of people would say, you know, well, God is angry at you. And so you can't go back to him. Or that was, it wasn't theologically correct, but some people would say that. Um, it became why uh, one of the reasons they say, oh, Mary, you know, if God throws you out of heaven, God, Mary will sneak you in the back door, which is terrible theology. And, and certainly I'm, I'm sure there's a heresy in there or two. Um, but God gives us examples in these stories of human beings with their flaws about the power of love and forgiveness and, and a desire for healing and, and restoration. So two things uh, I, I want you to think about. One, is there something in your life that you think you can't give to God because it's a sin or it's something bad? Um, it can't be worse than Absalom and his father. Um, we need to have faith in God because he gives us examples of, of faith and, and hope and mercy. And, and so we can hope for this same thing. We can put our faith in him. And, and the second thing is when, when I can open my heart to receive that from God, if, if I can hold on to that faith, if I can hope for God's love and mercy in my life, well, then I become that, that middle story, if you will, the story of the woman who was healed of, of her bleeding. My very life can be that sign of hope for someone else. And your life, your life can do that also. Uh, People can look at your life and, and your, uh, you're being healed by God. You're being forgiven. Um, they can see that and, and put their hope in God. Uh, so if you ever are speaking to somebody and, and they say, you know, well, I'd go back to church, but, you know, lightning would strike the church or lightning would strike uh, me, um, might be good just to say, you know, I, I felt the same way or I have felt that way at times. And, you know, and maybe I, I went to confession or, or maybe I just, I went into the back of church and, and I sat down and I, and I opened my heart to God and, and I wasn't struck by lightning. God, God forgave my sins and, and he healed me. Uh, if you've had an experience of that, uh, by sharing it with someone else, you can be that, uh, that bridge or that light in the darkness. You can be that sign of hope for people. God bless you.